All right, so a few of you that are watching this video may remember this tweet that I had from a while ago where I asked everybody, which of these characters is the most interesting? Interpret this question however you like. And I didn't really explain too much of it, but basically is what I was listing here was four characters that are considered high or top tier that I honestly feel like I don't really know anything about. I like I know how to fight against these characters for the most part, but if I were to pick up a controller and try to play any of these characters listed, I would have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. So is what I'm going to do now is uh, this video, I'm going to maybe make it into like a series. I'm not really sure exactly where it's going to go, but we'll kind of play it by ear. But it's going to be taking one of these characters that I know nothing about, and I'm going to try to learn them from scratch, and I'm going to show you guys like the process that I use and maybe uh, we'll learn something about how to learn a character faster. I don't know. It's it's kind of an experiment, so we'll see what happens. Uh, so the character that won the poll is Mewtwo, so I guess we're going to start there. And before we jump into this, I'm going to quickly show you guys this, uh, a Wikipedia article about the four stages of competence, because I think this is kind of important to know before we dive into this. So... It's basically a, like a model on the here uh, the four stages of competence it, or the conscious competence learning model relates to the psychological states involved in the process of pr progressing from incompetence to competence in a skill. And so in this case, it's going to be learning a new character in Smash. So here's the four stages. The first stage is unconscious incompetence. That's the bottom of the triangle. Uh, the individual does not understand or know how to do something and does not necessarily recognize the deficit. They may deny the usefulness of the skill. The individual must have recognized their own incompetence and the value of the new skill before moving on to the next stage. So people that are in this stage is kind of going to be like your casuals. These are going to be the people that claim that they're the best Smash player in the world. Like they think they're so good, but in reality, they don't even know what they don't know. The second stage is conscious incompetence. Though the individual does not understand or know how to do something, they recognize the deficit as well as the value of a new skill in addressing the deficit. The making of mistakes can be integral to the learning process at this stage. So this is going to be maybe somebody that's like new to the scene, just showing up to their tournament. They realize now how much there is to smash that they don't know. And this is where you really are able to start learning something. As you keep getting better at that skill, you finally reach conscious competence, and this is where the individual understands or knows how to do something. However, demonstrating the skill or knowledge requires cr concentration. It may be broken down into steps, and there is heavy conscious involvement in executing the new skill. And then after that, you have unconscious competence, which is where you've had so much practice with the skill that it becomes second nature and can be performed easily. So that's going to be like top players and stuff. So. We're going to see how quickly I can maybe get from unconscious incompetence to unconscious competence with a character that I've never played before. So here, here's the plan of action. I'm just going to use this timer that I'm going to pull up over here. I'm going to hit start on this timer and I'm going to give myself one hour. And we're going to see what I can do in one hour. I don't know how much we're going to learn, but uh, we're going to give this a try. I always use uh, a note-taking program while I'm learning things. I'm going to use OneNote. It's uh, pretty easy and it syncs automatically between my desktop and my phone. So if I'm ever like at a tournament, I can take notes easily and it ends up in here. And uh, so we're just going to start a new section here. Uh, we'll call it Mewtwo because that's who we're going to learn. And the thing that's cool is you can have different pages in it, so in different sections. So like, all right, here's maybe I'll just name this section Mewtwo. Actually, that makes more sense. So then maybe here we could do like matchup notes. Uh, you could add another page, call it like tech, maybe some tech that you have to learn. And maybe like a, when I go back and make it part two where I'm going to maybe do like Corrin or Zero Suit, I can just add a whole new new section for like Corrin. And then, or, oops, there we go. And then you can start taking more notes in there and then you can you know, just type whatever. So that's, I like OneNote. Use whatever you like. It doesn't really matter too much. Back to Mewtwo now. Okay. Uh, I don't really need this page. That was just for a demonstration. All right. So this is just going to be like general notes. So I have this timer. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to give myself an hour and we're going to see how much I can get down in my notes. My plan, it, this is the only plan that I have right now is I'm going to start by figuring out 
what are the things that I don't know, and then I can start trying to learn things from there. All right. So here we go. We've got one hour. Let's see what we can do. And the timer is ticking. So I guess the first thing I'm going to do is go to Smash Wiki. We're going to look up Mewtwo on here. Uh, and we are going to scroll down to, oh, where is it? Where, where does it show like the notable players list? Oh, here we go. I think you have to go through this page. All right. And competitive play. All right. So here are the notable players. I'll put that down. Notable players. All right. So we have Abadango. Um, obviously we have Wadi. Rich Brown is another one. So those are, the, I think, the main ones, but there's a few more that I'm not too familiar with on here, so we're going to try to look at some of those as well. Blue, I remember. I don't know if he plays as much anymore, but I'll, I'll put I'll put him down. Uh, Death Horse is really good. Um, yeah, so that looks like uh, the main ones. So Mewtwo in Argentina, interesting. Ireland power rankings. Lots of Mewtwo's from all over. That's kind of cool. Let's uh, let's see another Japanese Mewtwo. We'll put down. I will right, put down Ginkgo. I don't know how relevant those results are, but it, third at something, probably pretty good. I guess our next step. Let's actually uh, smash chords. This is a, usually a good spot to find different tips and tricks for any character. They have like character specific discords. We're gonna see if we can find one for Mewtwo because if we go there, we can probably find a general guide of most of the stuff we're gonna to need to know. All right, let's see. Smash for character. Mewtwo. Now we are in here. Oh my gosh, this is a pretty active one. Look at all these people that are online right now. That is crazy. And so this is like a, gonna be a community where there's all kinds of People are going to be talking about Mewtwo all the time. Uh, on the side here, metagame, let's see, resources. This is what I'm looking for. Let's see what we can find in here. All right, a comprehensive Mewtwo guide. That's going to be good. Open that up. Okay. In-depth guide to Nair. Probably will have some useful stuff in there. Match up Pokedex. I feel like it right now in the beginning, since I don't really know anything about Mewtwo. I think diving into learning specific matchups probably won't be optimal, so I'm going to skip over that for now. And same thing with like kill percent, frame data, footstool combos. Like that's that's all more complicated stuff. Like maybe after I get the basics down, I want to just get a general idea of how to play neutral, how to do all kinds of other tech with him. We'll, so I think that this should be good for now. Uh, so yeah, let's see what we got here. The Nair. Okay, now here, so this is the main, like, in general guide. So now we'll start a new thing over here, tech. Can do a pretty cool technique called double jump, cancel, shadow ball, charge, buffer, Whoa, okay. The, are, are you trying to be shulk mains here? Why? Don't name your tech like that. Just call it something simple. That's stupid. Nobody wants to write that down. Right now, I'm just going to be writing things down. I'm not even going to go bother trying to play the game until after at least this full hour of just reading and watching videos. Let's try to figure out our combos. I think that's going to be what our main focus should be right now, to be honest. Like, having the tech is cool. We're going to have to learn that eventually. But for now, let's see if we can... Yeah, combos and kill percent. Combo game overview 4.1. I want I want the bread and butter. You know what I mean? The stuff you're going to be using every game. Now, one thing you can do that I don't recommend is a lot of times I see people who will like, oh, I'm just going to like copy paste this whole thing in there. But realistically, you're if you do that, you're not going to remember it as well. Whereas if you type it out yourself, for one, you can put it into shorter things that are easier to read when you go back and look at it later. And for two, just the physical action of writing it down yourself will help you to remember it anyways. So I'm not going to be copy pasting things like that. That's why I'm just going to be writing it down as I see it on the side. Fast fall up here is one of Mewtwo's best combo moves. It is safe on shield. Okay, that's big. 
uh, let's just like put this down in its own section over here. Uh, up there is safe. I'm gonna eventually move my notes around and stuff into different sections to make it all read easier, but for now I'm kind of just writing things as I go. Okay, its risk reward ratio is in his favor, being low risk, high reward. Fast fall up air starts kill combos as well as 50% strings that are inescapable. That sounds pretty good. Each hitbox has a different combo potential, allowing me to combo for an extended period compared to fair. See, this guide, I don't really like that it's not telling you too much specific things. It says, like, fast fall up air starts kill combos that are inescapable, but what are they? Let's write it down anyway. Okay, now here's what I'm looking for. Specific combo. Oh my god. This whole time I'm, like, reading this, thinking that that's all it's talking about. This is, like, I just wasted, like, a solid ten minutes. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, kill confirm. Great combo, but unreliable. High risk, high reward. I just want bread and butter, honestly. So, yeah, it's kind of eating up my time. So, I'm going to... So, yeah, since I'm already halfway through my one hour time, I'm going to just look for more bread and butter, and then I'm going to try to watch some videos. So, I think at this point, I'm just going to dive in and start watching some videos. So, let's make a new page. Video notes. Uh, most recent tournament I can remember a Mewtwo doing really good at would be 2GG. I feel like it, if I want to learn basic bread and butter Mewtwo stuff, I'm probably best off not watching like a top player matchup. You're probably better off watching like a top player against a high level player. And the reason being is that you'll be able to see more of how the offense works and get the bread and butter down from that. So we'll just search Wadi Mewtwo sort. I always sort by upload date because recent stuff is almost always going to be better. So, yeah, it's a four minute match against. I mean, it's a King DD. Let's we'll click it, see what it's like. Match, we got Wadi going up against. We'll probably at least get some DD decent combo DD ideas DD. from this. Now, when I'm watching YouTube videos, I'm almost always using uh, DD. the arrow keys. Left and right can filter you through by five seconds. And then L and J also can filter by 10 seconds instead of 5. So it really helps to just skip through stuff that you don't want to see. Alright, so we're going to go... We don't really have time to do more videos. I have about 5 minutes left. Alright, so I have less than a minute left. So I think I'm going to call it like that for this one session. So let's let's see what I got here really quick. Some tech I can practice for next time. Stuff about neutral. I want my neutral to mainly consist of down tilts and fares. Those are going to be the safest moves that lead into a lot of damage. Shadow Ball, also good, especially useful for stage control and some follow-ups I'm going to have to figure out. Whereas up tilt and nair can be combo starters, but are less safe than fair and down tilt and are better used as a punish. So that's how my neutral game is going to play. Uh, some combos. Down tilt into fair is going to be a huge one, and same thing with up air. Everything else is going to be kind of situational, and I think I'm going to have to lab and kind of figure it out as I go. Getting up from the ledge, double jump up air seems good. There's also the double jump cancel shadow ball stuff I'm going to have to practice. Battlefield, good stage. Down smash can maybe catch two frames, I'll have to figure that out. But this is all the time I have. Uh, so that's hour one. I'm going to do another hour tomorrow, and then maybe another hour Wednesday too. A quick thing that I want to say before I close out this hour is that one of the reasons that I was doing one hour at a time is that that's actually one of the best ways to learn things, is that if you put a time limit on yourself, and basically the reason for that is that if you have a time limit, you're trying to use that time limit to the best potential. That's one of the reasons. It's like if you're just, if I don't have a time limit for myself, I'll, I'd just be like casually looking through, you know, like, okay, figure this out a little bit, like maybe watch a video here or there. But when you have deadlines, especially something as short as an hour, you work harder towards it. And so it just kind of adds that little bit to, uh, of pressure to get you to actually do the work. And then you don't want to go too much more than that. Otherwise you kind of burn yourself out on it. Whereas that hour is just short enough that like it's not horrible. Like anybody can really spend an hour doing anything. And I also want this video to maybe show that you don't have to spend 50 hours a day playing to get decent at something. 
We're going to see if just like an hour a day I can get my Mewtwo to be kind of decent. Uh, so the end goal of this, I'm going to play an hour a day, make videos like this, maybe put it together in some big compilation at the end, and then the last thing, I think, I don't know, I'm not sure how many hours I'm going to do before I do this, but we'll just say, for example, after like 10 hours of just grinding out learning Mewtwo like this, uh, we're going to just enter our weekly and play all Mewtwo and see what happens. So that's the ultimate goal, is see how far we can get in a weekly. So I'll keep you guys posted for when that weekly is going to be happening, but uh, let's, for now, this is what we got, and we'll keep at it tomorrow.